Hey folks, it's Kyle from FireLab here. I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial on how to set up and run your first test. So when you first create your account, you're going to have a sample test included for you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. If we click the edit button on the right hand side, we go straight into the test editor. So when you first create your test, you can give your test a name. You can set the URL that you want to test. If you're testing a page in your application that requires authentication, you can enter in the username and password required here. You can also determine when you want the test to run. So you can either run the test manually, you can set it to run every day, you can set it to run every week on a specific day, or you can set it to run every month on a specific date. For this, let's just keep this on manual. So your test is made up of two main components. We have actions, which are basically the actions that a user takes, or the inputs that a user makes in the browser when they interact with your application. And then if we scroll down, we have results. This is what we expect to happen as a result of the actions taken. So let's go up here and we can see we've got four actions set up. So we're gonna, we're typing Hal into the input named name. We're typing the email address into the email input typing awful password into the password input. We're selecting a plan from the dropdown. And we can actually go in and edit any of these actions at any time. We can also delete them. But let's create another action to finally submit this form before we run the test. So go here and then we can choose from our four actions. We could click, type, hover, select. For this, I want to input a click action. So I hit click. Go over here to the right hand side and then we just input the CSS selector of the element that we want to click. For me, that's going to be form button. Now, when you're doing this, the CSS selector has to be unique. What I would recommend doing is whenever you're building a user interface is to add a unique ID or data attribute to the element so that whenever you're building these tests, you just put that unique ID in here. It's much easier than using you know, class names that are nested five or 10 levels deep. So let's go ahead and save this action. Okay, and finally, let's take a look down at the results section. So we've got four metrics here that we want to test as a result of the actions that we take. We want a response from the URL API account to contain uh, a token variable that is a type of object. We want the response time to be less than 2000 milliseconds. So we can actually benchmark the speed of the application. We want an HTTP status of 200. And we also want to make sure that the user interface has an element with the class name of onboarding. And then I'm finally going to add one more result here that we expect. So we're going to add a new result and this time we'll add a navigation metric. So we also want to expect that the page will navigate to welcome once the user has finished signing up. So let's save that. So now we have five actions and five things that we expect to happen. What we're going to do now is run the test which is going to open up a real browser it's going to simulate all of these actions and then it's going to test the response. So let's go ahead and click run and our test will start running. There we go. So let's now go to view report. And we can see a full breakdown of, of what just happened in the browser. Okay, so here's our test log. We can see that the response included the token. Response time was 1500 milliseconds. We got an HTTP 200. Our page did navigate to welcome and the onboarding element was found. We can also find a screenshot of what happened whenever all the actions were input. So if something did go wrong with your test, you could actually see here exactly what happened and what the error message was. Now all of these reports are saved for you so you can actually go back in time and look at any of your previous test reports. So if I just go back to my test view and then over here if you click the little activity icon you can see all the previous tests that have run. So we click view report. We can go back and see the report for the test that we've just run. 
if you schedule any of your tests to run on a daily, weekly or monthly basis, you will get an email as soon as your tests have run to notify you of how those tests performed. Let's take a quick look at the email. So every day or every week or every month, you will get one of these test reports in your inbox so you can immediately see any problems. So here's an example where I have two tests that failed. So if I go down here, I can actually see that my sign up test failed and my sign in test failed. So I then know that I can immediately take action. I know there's a problem somewhere in the application and I can go and take action right away. I don't need to wait until one of my users gets in touch and tells me they couldn't sign up, which would be really bad. I get notified straight away. Okay, folks, that's it. Hope you find the tutorial useful. If you have any questions about the product, just drop me an email at firelab at usegravity.app or sign up and use the little chat button inside the application and I'll be happy to help.